Carl and Damon here from Games, Brains and Headbang Life, GBHBuild.com for short. And we're back in the same room. Check it out. <laughs> Finally off those phones and Zoom and the bad sound that we got with it and the buzzing and all the annoying things that would interrupt us. Now we're here in the room and we can be interrupted in here in person. <laughs> it is, of course, you've seen the title. They made what into a movie. And I've been avoiding this one. We're up to the well past 10 episodes. And I've been avoiding this one and a couple like this for a reason. We had this discussion about some of the more iconic ones that exist in the movie, video game movie adaptions. And it is your Street Fighters. It is your Mortal Kombat. It's your Super Mario Brothers. The famous ones that... I wanted to space out. It'd be easy just to do them all in a row. It's like, no, no, these are famous for many reasons. Let's space them out. So we did like, we did what? We did uh, Mortal Kombat in the first or second ever episode. Yep. Did Annihilation as well. And uh, now we're looking at this one. We're going to Super Mario Brothers. And here's the thing. This is a film I've seen far too many times. Way too many times for the quality of it overall, you know? And the idea of doing it for this video, I was actually generally like, oh God, I've got to do this again. Because it's a really long movie. And that's not even including if you do watch now this extended cut version. So you've got, I think that's 120 minutes compared to the 105 it yeah. is as a standard. 105 minutes. And this film should need no introduction. It is famous. Infamous? I don't know. I don't know how you want to describe it these days. <sighs> Crap. I mean, crap's the right word. It is a crap movie. That's what it's famous for. Not just being an incredibly poor an adaption of a, a video game that realistically can't be adapted. No. I mean, it's absurd if you consider what Mario was when this movie was released. Even now, like, if you look at the great game Mario games that have come since, your, your Super Mario 64s, your Super Mario Sunshine, your Super Mario Galaxy, your Super Mario, and so on, all of that stuff... You still couldn't. You still couldn't turn it into a movie. It was just a, a quick let's let, let's make a couple of million or whatever, or whatever mate. You know. Do you think it's as simple as that though? I, I, here's the thing: the stories behind this and the detail behind it and all that is always really fascinating. <clears throat> but what I find more fascinating than anything else is how mental the script is, like how crazy this idea was, and how everyone went, "Yeah, sure, why not? Let's do it this way." Well, I'm, I mean, the biggest one that surprised me was obviously um, Bob Hoskins. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, he, he's, he's a very famous actor. Of course. I'm surprised. I mean, he must have been paid sh a shitload of money to do this. He must have been, surely. Because why, why, would, why, why would he put his reputation to this? Well, I mean, I, I, here's the thing. I guess you kind of hope that it's going to be a hit, mm. you know? Like, that isn't like the idea, I suppose. Not that you, you don't... You, you can, I mean, you read a script and you think, okay, it's a bit mental, it's mm. a bit... Crazy. I don't know if this is going to work, but you kind of think, well, I'll, I'll do my part and hopefully it'll turn out to be good. Unless he was a major fan of Mario. Nice. Well, he, he, late, he in his later years, obviously he's now passed away, but he in his later years um, wouldn't even talk about this movie. Mm. You know, like he hates it. That kind of thing. Which I don't think is fair. I genuinely don't think it's fair. Now, I know this movie has a bit of a cult following now. And that cult following will often be like, no, no, it's a good movie. You're just not seeing it right in this and that, whatever. That kind of shit annoys me. Here's the thing. You can enjoy this movie, but still obviously recognise it is at its core a terrible movie. A nonsense story with dumb ideas and in no way befitting of the games it came. You can do all of that. Yep. You can, while still enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. There are lots of things about this movie I enjoy. And here's the thing. When I came to doing these notes, I sat there and I was like, oh. and then I said to myself, do it differently. Not, not the notes, we're going to talk for the movie. I said, look at it differently. You know it's crap. You know the bad scenes. You know this is going to annoy you. You know you're not going to like that. You know you're going to go, what? And then I was like, look at it. What do you like? Like, what, what do you like about this movie? So, let's begin with some of the things we like. Now, I'm going to start by throwing in a couple. John Leguizamo, who plays Luigi. I think he's fucking adorable in this. I think he's cute. The way he's his geeky silliness around Daisy, I really like him. I really, really like him. He's done a few good films. I mean, he has. I mean, I, I suppose he, I wouldn't say he captures Luigi perfectly, but I think his ca ca character-wise, I think I, I would sort of associate him more with Luigi because it, 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 for me he, he fits the part of the 
I don't know what you want to call them, the, the reject brother, I suppose, or... I, don't I mean, I, I guess, I, it's interesting you say, like, fits the character of Luigi. What character? Luigi and Mario didn't have characters. Uh, Let's, you must agree with me. Bob Hoskins is Mario, John Leguizamo is Luigi. Looks-wise, they're, 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 I can buy them as Mario and Luigi. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Other aspects I really, really like. I really like the concept of the asteroid. And that aspect. I mm. think that's an okay, and I, I think it's a different idea. Man, we're going to have very different opinions <laughs> yeah, on this. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I watched this with, 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 with my 12 year old son, and he was like, what the, what the hell is this? Yeah, I mean, that is one of the more famous things we'll have to sort of mention straight away. How this is insane, because it's not geared for kids. Because while it has silly moments, it is so baffling, so hard to follow a lot of the time. I don't get how a kid could enjoy it yeah. at all. I, I, I don't know what, the, what, what what they were planning when, when they or who they were aiming for. Could they aim for kids, adults, or you, when you're trying to please everybody, you please nobody. Because if you're an adult as well, it's so absurdly stupid, so slapstick at times, so silly. There's nothing really to grab you their eye. But there's no drama. There's no great elements where you're like, oh, here's some darkness for the adults mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that then leaves the third type of fan. Which is the ones who are watching it because they're a video game fan. Yeah, that's it. How are you pleasing them? Because it's not. It's just, hey, we have Mario Brothers. And we're going to make some reference to the game. Some that I like. Because I can at least go, okay, that's silly. Some that I'm like, wait, what? Big Bertha is a woman in a dress who happens to be big. Not a giant bomb. A bullet. What? Yep. In stuff like that. Do you know what my biggest disappointment in the film overall is? Biggest disappointment. Got me loads, but... Uh... No, no, my biggest. The one that goes top of all. That I'm just like, oh man, you didn't, could have done better there. Cooper. Yeah, Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Dennis Hopper. I think Dennis Hopper's great. I've seen Dennis Hopper do a wide array of roles. And it does make me smile as well that uh, Dennis Hopper and John Leguizami would be in this film together. And in many years down the line would be in the same film, Land of the Dead, George A. Romero's, mm. where they even share screen time. Uh, with each other, which I think is awesome. But I think Dennis Hopper is insanely played, like not not given his, not given enough to do here, and that's really disappointing. But also the character of Cooper, that is basically a uh, power hungry germaphobe. What the fuck is that? What is that? And here's the thing, like. I get it all like Bowser didn't exist. We called him Cooper when we were playing Mario back then. That's all it was. That's fine. But like, what is this crap about germs? What is this crap about germs? I, I, I mean, I put it to the fact that the reference because because they're plumbers. So they, 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 they play with pipes to go down toilets. So it was a reference to the fact that, that, that that's what I thought I saw is the whole germ thing. But That is a big jump, yeah, man. It's a, a, a big a jump. jump. But, but yeah, we're going to get into the film anyway and we'll sort of pull out, pull out the parts that you enjoy and don't enjoy as we go along. The 1993 adventure comedy film, which is of course loosely based on the Mario video game series by Nintendo. It is the first feature-led feature, feature -led live action film to be based on a video game. Did you know that? First one. Mm -hmm. First feature length, okay. live action, that those might, two. That might explain why it was so bad. Really? No, no it doesn't because oh. 10 years later, 20 years later we would still get shit video game adaptions you know don't yeah don't act like <laughs> this set the bar low Th this was a bad start and it didn't exactly get better after this uh, the film was directed by the husband and wife team of Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel written by Parker Bennett Terry Ronte and Ed Solomon and distributed by Bjorn Vista Pictures through Hollywood Pictures its story follows the Mario Brothers, Bob Hoskins, and John Leguizami in their quest to rescue Princess Daisy, Samantha, Math Mathis from a dystopian parallel universe, universe ruled by the ruthless President Cooper. I mean, there it is, and it? it's the last part there. Dystopian parallel world ruled by the ruthless President Cooper. Okay. All right, fair enough. And that is, of course, Dennis Hopper. Released May 28th, 1993, the film was a critical and financial failure. Grossing 38.9 million worldwide against a budget of 42 to 48 million. Wow. So it didn't even get its budget back. How the hell did, it, did, it, did that cost? That, that, that I cost can believe that. Money. Really? Look at, my God, if one thing I'll praise this movie for is set building, mm. the stunts, 
like I would I can see where they oh, spent the money. Yeah. It's a, I just find it wages, am- man, wages. Bob Bob Hoskin and Dennis Dennis Dennis, Dennis buddy, um, Cooper, Dennis Hopper. Yeah, yeah, Hopper sorry, that, that must have been the, the, the budget there. There would have been money spent on those two particularly big name actors there as well. But yeah, I mean, the fact that it didn't really manage to recoup its budget to me is a real like, whoa, yeah, what a failure that is. And as I said at the start, despite its poor reception, the film has gained a cult following in late in years and has recently regarded as a cult classic. If you're one of those people, stop. Stop doing that. Not every movie you watch is so bad it's good. Just, it can, just because you like it, doesn't make it so bad it's good it's one of those where it's no it's bad i just happen to like it yeah. i get real tired of this in modern days where something that is objectively bad but becomes popular because of that everyone goes oh it's so bad it's good it's like is it is it <laughs> now this is very important on june the 1st 2021 so really modern Editor and restorationist Grant Gilkirst and members of the Super Mario Brothers movie archive released an unofficial restoration of the extended cut of Super Mario Brothers. This restoration was dubbed the Morton Jankel cut and despite having no involvement from either director. It basically extended many, many scenes and added some extra, including a rap by Spike and Iggy. Now this was originally was um, available on the internet free movie internet archive. But from what I can see, it's been pulled down. I'm not entirely sure why, mm. but I couldn't find it. So I don't know what's gone on then. I wonder if, it, I mean, to, to release it now after so many, so it's many because they were found. Mm. Bits were found. That's the thing. Bits, I believe as well, the restoration cuts come from a VHS transfer. So that's the thing. You often find this. So it, it, I, I, I would just, 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 just had, had a bad idea. Like maybe they're doing it because like, oh, we're going to remake the movie. The movie is being not movie, movie's not being remade, but um, as of the time of recording, we are due or expecting the a new Mario Brothers movie, mm. but animated. Oh, okay. Uh, in 2021, 2022, and that makes sense because if you had said to me, check this. If you had said to me, similar to this. Uh, they're doing. They're going to adapt Sonic the Hedgehog. I'd have been like, okay, well that's not going to work because Sonic the Hedgehog and it's probably going to suck. And then I saw the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, the one with uh, Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, and I thought it was all right. Yeah. I thought it was fun at times, and it was good, and it was interesting. So, uh, and as we're seeing with like the Mortal Kombat re- redo and all that, they're beginning to get it. They're beginning to understand how to make these movies into things. Mm. I, would, would you a big flop? Like, would you a big flop? Because this is what happens. Things become popular. And if you look at... If you look at the list of stuff that is to be apparently adapted into mm. movies on Wikipedia or something, you start going, okay, you're all going over the top here. You've now decided this is where you can make some money. And we know what ends up happening. The more you spam something, yep. the more it becomes, nope, that's it. You know, it's like, you know, we've had a very successful Mortal Kombat movie. So we're going to get a sequel and so on. But how long before everyone just quickly tires of that? Yeah, you know, problem. that is the problem. So yeah, I wasn't looking forward to this, but we do begin in video game style. We get the Mario theme of the credits before we see an ancient di- we, 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 we're in ancient dinosaur times. In cartoon computer style graphics and a voiceover talking about the meteorite that wiped them out. Apparently, as it comes up along the bottom, this is Brooklyn 65 million years ago. And the narrator's super strong Brooklyn accent finally makes sense yeah. you know what I mean it's like hey get out you know like that kind of thing it, I can't do a Brooklyn accent but you, you, you know yeah, the yeah. accent you know it's that kind of thing he goes on to suggest that the meteorite may have created a parallel world where some dinosaurs went and evolved and admittedly I'll imagine many people back in the 90s went nope that that's where this ends eject that VHS yeah. <laughs> not watching this we then jump to Brooklyn 20 years ago It's a storm and we see a woman leaving what appears to be a pot, a metal pot outside a church. We see her put like a stone in it. She knocks and runs away into the streets. Uh, We see a nun opening the door and she takes the pot inside. The mysterious woman, she runs down the street and into an open sewer hole. Inside the church, the pod opens and the nuns find a big old egg inside. The woman is running through the sewers and is grabbed from behind by someone she calls Cooper. And this is our first shot of Dennis Hopper. 
In the struggle, the area they are in begins to collapse and she screams. So presumably dead. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what happened in regards to what knocked the stuff down. It's not really a, that you don't really see. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice um, who's playing the woman? Samantha Mathis. She's okay. playing her own mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a shot where she kind of her hood's mm -hmm. loose, and I was like, oh, that's Samantha Mathis. Save a bit of cash. Well, I, it also works, doesn't it? Because, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, don't, you, you never look exactly like your parents mm. in regards to the fact she would look exactly like her mother. But yeah. I was like, well, it works. That's her mother. You know, that kind of thing. Um, in, the, in the nunnery, the egg cracks and the nuns are shocked to find a baby inside. Now, I laugh my head at this scene every time because I presume all these nuns renounce their faith in God. Well, God doesn't exist. What we know about God has completely been ruined yeah. by a baby coming out of an egg. Right? Indeed. That one crosses herself, and I'm like, "Bitch, please, this is nothing related." You would no. be like, "You might, dare I say, you might go Satan," you know? Yes, definitely. Um, and then we see one of the nuns sort of hold up the rock that was with her, and it glints in the light. This opening is genuinely like, you just sit with your mouth open, like, "Go, what the fuck is happening?" It's just a your, your basic opening to, to a lot of, a lot, lot of films or TV series that I've seen, you know, I mean, so many films I've seen, like the baby's left at the door, ring the doorbell, run off, you know, or... But do you not find it just so utterly baffling now? <clears throat> now, forget, forget, <clears throat> uh, forget what you know and you know what happens afterwards. Imagine your first experience with this movie. You'd be like, what the yeah. fuck is this? I mean, I said too many times when, when I watch uh, games to movies, I, I try to pinpoint the game to the, to the of course film. I, I tried to know well, well Peach was never born in it. obviously Daisy's meant to be Peach yeah there is uh, no Peach yeah obviously but obviously Daisy's meant to be the reference to Peach I'm, I'm guessing so but well Daisy's her own thing isn't she in the well, game yeah. series later on yeah yeah but yeah I mean did Peach have a name back in 93 I don't think she did it's just Princess isn't yeah, it yeah well Princess yeah so yeah. I, I, I don't know I don't know even, even, even where Peach came from to be fair to be honest yeah, that that's for gamers. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that that's. But that's... I mean, I I I I just presume that that that, that would, she, she was princess. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I kept playing like, like I mean, I, I played every like, like pretty much every Mario game. Where the hell does this come into the into the the, the, the process? But well, you're like, well, Yoshi shits out eggs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that's it. It is baffling, mm. and like I said, it it just feels so substandard. You're like, where the hell is this Mario related? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're not expecting an, in, an immediate drop into here's Mario and here's Luigi bouncing on Goomba's heads yeah. and stuff like that. But you're just like, what? What's going on? But then we jump to Brooklyn now. It says Brooklyn now, not 2021. Yeah. It's now as a 1993, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. As we find ourselves in an apartment that it sort of scans across and straight away you're like, as you see plunges on the wall, but on like a gun rack, instead it's plunges. And it's one of those where you go, oh, okay, is, it, is this what it's going to be? Is it going to be yeah. this kind of movie? Ha, ha, ha. You stupid know? references. Yeah, stupid references. Uh, the TV is on and it appears to be a show about weird and unexplained events. This show is super handy for a lot of the plot of this movie. Mm -hmm. The phone rings and a voice answers, introducing himself as Mario Brothers Plumbing. This is Mario, played by Bob Hoskins. Now, I'm not going to say a second name. We'll get to that later on. And... Uh, because that pit drives me nuts. But yeah, Bob Hoskins plays Mario. I Let's stop and talk about Bob Hoskins in this movie. I think he's fucking brilliant. I think, regardless of how he felt, I think he tries really, really hard. He's entertaining. I really like him. and I think him and John Leguizamo have great chemistry. I believe yeah. they're brothers. Yeah, I, I, I mean, probably probably one of the shining lights of the movie, to be fair. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing we'll say overall, I don't think you can really fault a lot of the acting in this. I think it's quite strong. Yeah, I, I mean, for, for me, the, 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 the story, it's a story, let's, let's everyone know, it's a story. It is a story yeah. as well, including some effects, but we'll get to well, them when yeah. they come up. Today on our miraculous world, another dimension, the universe next door. An alternate world separated by time and space and yet somehow joined and contiguous with our own. Mario Brothers plumbing, no leak too small. Yes, yeah, so then we see Luigi... Played by, of course, John Leguizamo. And he is watching the show, which is talking about other dimensions. How convenient. God, thank God he was watching then, eh? Mario gets off the phone and says they have a job. And apparently this is great news as they don't have much work and not much money. This is established in a scene between the pair. I think it's quite a good establishing sort of 
who they are, where they are, and what their problems are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We then get some exposition about missing Brooklyn girls as Mario complains about Luigi buying magazines that deal in the unexplained. It appears the younger brother has a bit of an obsession with the unexplained and weird stuff. But the important takeaway from this scene is about the missing girls. Now, it is exposition heavy, right? Mm -hmm. However, it's done in a way that doesn't feel as much because they're not standing there just talking to each other. Mario's putting his belt on. He's trying to get Luigi out the door. He's trying to get to the job. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like they're getting ready to go and talking at the same time. A bit more natural, Mm. yeah? So, uh, I I mean, this is way, way out there. But when I first saw this scene, I did this scene... (sighs) The fact that Luigi's into Supernatural, mm-hmm. he's into that. I reference it straight to Luigi's Mansion. So, wow. I, I, I know it's way out there. Cause we, of course uh, it know, is. With, with the whole, obviously, the fact that he, he, he ends up as a, as a ghost hunter, saving his brother. I, I, I mean, I, I know it's obviously way, way, way after the movie. Of course. But I don't know. I, I, when, when I saw this, I thought, well, the ghost, Supernatural, he's into all these missing things and trying to find stuff. She yeah. was saying like Nintendo was inspired years later to yeah, create yeah. Luigi's Mansion. Maybe they maybe they already had it written down somewhere. Like in like twenty years time, we're going to make this game here. <laughs> That's uh, a stretch, well, man. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think I think it's um, I think it's generally just an interesting coincidence. Mm-hmm. But actually, let's just totally get sidetracked. If Luigi's Mansion could work as an adaption, couldn't mm-hmm. it? I mean, <clears throat> as a video game adaption movie, it's yeah. Probably the only, only one which, which could really. I mean, mm. you, you can't make a, mo- a movie out of 64 or Sunshine. I mean, uh, I, I don't know how you would, but I mean, a mansion, ghosts, trying to find your brother, it's, it's quite easy to do. Yeah, bring J- John Lincoln's army back as an, a much older mm. Luigi. Mm. <clears throat> Anything's possible. You just got to believe. Shut up, Luigi. Like, there, he's, that's a line that um, he will say at this point in the movie and also say at the end. And I always really dislike lines as that, right? Because here's the thing. Not everything is possible. I, I get what they're trying to do, but like it's like, all right, cool, run around the world in five minutes, please. Oh, what you mean? It's not possible, mm-hmm. but believe and you can do it. It's that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but that line is purely there. So when he says it at the end, it'll have a bit more meaning when Mario kind of comes around because Mario is very sarcastic. Mario, the difference between the two is Mario lives in reality almost. You know, he want he's he he's, he's, he's he wants to get jobs. He wants to work. He wants to earn money. Luigi's got his head in the clouds, kind of thing. You know, that sort of situation, and that works quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't know it could happen. How? How could that possibly happen? Anything's possible, Mario. You just gotta believe. So the pair in a crappy van attempting to get across town to the job. They arrive, but thanks to Luigi's shortcut, they discover they've been beaten to the job by a rival company called Scapelli. And you're just like, first off, this is just stupid. So who calls multiple plumbers? This fucking people that needed a plumber. What were the, they called up one and then went, oh, we'll call another as well. Whoever gets here first does the job. Yeah. That's not how it works. Handling fee, man. Charge. That'd that, 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 that be a charge in, 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 in these days. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm saying like, imagine doing that now. No, no, I'm no. just going to call up five different plumbers and basically say to them, look, whoever gets there gets there first. Mm. Like gets the job first. That's absurd. But also the introduction of this second kind of company, Scapelli. Now the extended cut does go a little bit more further into this detail, perhaps the mob connections and all that. This this version, the original version, hints a little bit mm. at some of that stuff. But get check this out. You're gonna hear this a lot. Why is it here? Why do we need this in my Mario Brothers? I do not need a fucking mob company yeah, called pointless. Scapelli. Pointless. Yes. We then cut to another Scapelli contract, one that is in construction, that a news reporter is reporting has been shut down thanks to the local university students finding dinosaur bones amongst it. The boss, Anthony Scapelli, played by Gianna Russo, arrives and attempts to intimidate the head of the dig. This guy is so, such a caricature of an Italian mob boss. He might as well be coming out doing that, eh? you know? Again, you're allowed to smile. He he reminded me a lot of bloody that... um... Luigi, Waluigi. Waluigi. Yeah, yeah, him, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, reminded me a lot of him now. A lot of him. Really? Yeah. I, 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 like I said, when I watch these films, I, I, I try to associate things from, from from the games, and and, and he's one of my pictures for that, for that, for that, for that character. Okay. Okay. All right. It's odd, but fair enough. He arrives. He attempts to intimidate the head of the dig, and the head of the dig is Daisy, played by Samantha Mathis. She's very good in this. 
Uh, I don't think she gets a lot to do, but it's nice that they didn't go outright with Damsel in Distress. Mm. She has got a little bit of fight in her and a little bit of stuff to do. It's not like, basically, it's not like Peach, the princess from the games, where she's just waiting in another castle. Yeah. He implies that if she isn't done by tonight, she might end up missing like the other girls. Call the police. <laughs> Call the police. I mean, that there, forget the threat, but that implies he knows something about his missing girls. Yeah, exactly. Right? Daisy isn't intimidated, though. Look like a smart girl. I'll bet you'd be done by tonight. You know, a lot of girls have been going missing in Brooklyn lately. We then cut to two random guys. One gets into a cab with hot dogs, and they're clearly not from around here, as they remark that the food is supposedly dog, and throw the bread away and eat the meat. This is Iggy and Spike. Iggy is played by Fisher Stevens, and Spike is played by Richard Edson. Iggy and Spike. They are there for the kids, right? Yeah. But do you, do you like them? Yeah, they're, 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 they're funny. They, 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 have, they have their moments. They're, I don't think they need it, in my, in my opinion. But I quite... I, I, I don't laugh. I don't mind them either. Mm. Uh, you know, not a lot of what they do and say is particularly important or relevant to the <clears> story <throat> and so on. A lot of the time they're just there to, for... Particularly at the end, I think they become a convenience to avoid... How does Marion Luigi get to this situation? Oh, we can spike help them, that kind of situation. But I like the I like the difference between what I quite like is they're dumb characters, they're stupid characters, and half of the movie their brain power will be increased, so they'll be super, super smart. <laughs> but you can we all know you can be super, super smart and still stupid at the same time. Yeah. Which is exactly what they still are. And I think they kinda they've got they they're fun. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah, fun, yeah, yeah. Daisy's walking down the street to a phone and Iggy and Spike see her declaring that she is who they are after and that they're on orders from Cooper. So I'm glad they said all of that out loud. So like, you know what I mean? Like, because that's what you do. We, we, like, it's us sitting here right now and going, you know, um, yeah, Damon, it's really good that we're going to be doing the Super Mario Brothers review and I hope everybody understands that, you know, that sort of aspect. Why would we be saying that out loud while on camera? It's the typical bad guy thing. Uh, I'm going to explain my entire plan to you. Instead of killing you, I'll just tell you my entire plan first to give you a chance to escape. It's the James Bond thing, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Mario and Luigi break down on the side of the road. Mario gets out to check the engine and Luigi goes to check their messages at a payphone to see if they've worked. This made me feel so old. Oh my God, calling up a payphone to check your voicemail messages. Yeah. I mean, wow, 93. That's depressing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Iggy and Spike are following Daisy, but they're idiots. So like they walk into a plate glass window and sort of stagger around a bit. Yeah, it's all silly sort of, oh, look at the silly men kind of thing for your children. Kids will laugh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Daisy arrives at the same payphone and Luigi is transfixed by her. So much so that he gives her the phone as Mario comes back with water, complaining about having to pay for it. I thought that was an interesting bit of line. Just sort of so show the money problems that exist just yeah. by throwing that in there. But I love, I think John Leguizamo, like, oh. I find it so cute. He's so adorable. I think he plays, he, he, he does play very well, like, like I said, at, at the start, yeah. And, but I like the fact that, like I said, that, um, the money problems. Yeah. They keep playing, and, and obviously the fact that, he, and again, me, me I reference to the, to, to the game, I feel like, well, He's just a plumber, and he's risking a go. He doesn't get paid for it. Of course. He doesn't get no money for it. So, <clears throat> again, in the, in the movie, they're referencing that they basically have no money, they're broke, and they're doing work for free, pretty much. Yeah, they're not, they're not, doing, great, uh, they're not mm. doing great business as well, partially because of Scapelli. Um, I will say as well, the reason why I, I guess I really like John Leguizamo's cuteness in this as well is this sort of doe-eyed drooling over a girl thing. We've seen in other things. It, it, you kind of expect it to inevitably take a kind of sinister, even though it's not meant to be sinister, it sometimes comes across that way, you're like, oh, calm down, guy. Yeah. Get your tongue back in your mouth. At no point in this movie does it come across that way. No. It comes across just, do I, I've fallen in love with her, and it's cute, rather than yeah. gross. He, he, yeah, I mean, he's actually quite, quite, quite a gentleman. He is, really, yeah. he is, yeah. he is, he is. And it kind of makes the ending have a little bit more oomph yeah. because of this. Mm -hmm. So I really like it. Uh, Daisy calls at university to ask for more security. Mario then encourages Luigi to go talk to her while Iggy and Spike watch from their car. Daisy thanks Luigi for the quarter and he asks if she's okay. Uh, he offers her a ride. Mario fixes the van and Luigi attempts to chat her up, but he crashes and fucking burns. <laughs> um, I love this scene of Mario sort of trying to sort of talk behind him. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's good because it's so obvious but it just makes Luigi seem cute. Mario seem like a nice guy. And Daisy kind of finds it funny. Yep. You know? I like it. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, definitely. 
Mario rescues it and they, Daisy agrees to the ride. And here's the thing as well. You can be the whole like, why is she getting in a car with a few... It's the middle of the day in New York and at no point did they come across like weirdos or threatening or nope. anything like that. They take her to the dig site and Luigi asks her to dinner with a lot of prompting from Luigi. You know, what my brother's trying to say. Like, it's lovely shit. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, they are, they are, I just think all three of them have a, have a, a very good ke um, chemistry. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, she agrees and the brothers argue and after driving off. That night, it's a double date. Mario with his girlfriend, Daniela, played by Dania Kaminsky. Don't go, why wasn't it Peach or anything like that? I say, don't think Peach existed. Yeah. yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and Luigi and Daisy. They're having Italian food. Ha, ha, ha. And talking about Daisy's dig. Daniela invites Daisy to a tanning salon. That's the scene. And we see that she has the rock around her neck. The tan It seems to only exist so that she can be like, oh, I never take this off. The rock around her neck. Daisy was the baby. No surprises there. As her mother was clearly Samantha Mattis from earlier on. She tells them she was abandoned. And Luigi reveals he also doesn't know his parents. That Mario raised him. Love this. Oh, he's been my mother, my father, and all that. And Bob Wilson's little smiling face. Again, it's just like, it's cute. Yeah, and it, again, it, it makes sense, you know, because, I mean, Mario was, was always the, I don't know the word, the, the number one, you know, the, the bigger player. Brother. one. Yeah, yeah. Player yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, well, player one, yeah, exactly. Player yeah. one, it's as simple as that. Yeah. But I like the fact as well, they make it so that Mario's probably, I don't know, maybe a good 20 years older than Luigi yeah. in this. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, like, Mario doesn't sit there and go, oh, your the parents were like this and all that. It's believable that they might have died while Luigi was very, very young and stuff like that. It, it's it's all very yeah, believable. Definitely. Uh, Luigi and Daisy have a moment over dead parents, which is always a weird one. Oh, we've got something in common, dead yeah, parents. Not, not really first date topic. No, no. Uh, and Mario and Daniela intervene to get the pair alone. Luigi offers to walk Daisy home and she agrees. Spike and Iggy are outside the restaurant and see Mario and Dan Daniela leaving. And they think Daniela is now who they're after. But in disguise? I don't know how... I know they're idiots, but that's a fucking jump, oh. isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, and it seems as well, they make a point here of saying like, oh, if we bring back the wrong girl... Uh, Cooper will kill us, that kind of thing. So you kind of got, oh, they're responsible for the missing women. Yeah. Luigi, da Luigi and Daisy take, talk on their walk. Both think they're as weird as each other. But Luigi's interest in her work has her decide to show them what she's doing. Again, another good scene. The chemistry is the organ in the street. The, oh, I thought you'd be put off by my weirdness and all that. And then her being like, are you really interested in my job? And he's like, yeah, I really am. Like, this is shit is good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Basically, perfectly good movie. Yeah. Just not Mario Brothers. Exactly, yeah. Meanwhile, Mario has taken Daniela home and said his goodbyes. As he drives off, Iggy and Spike strike before she can get inside the door. So good timing there, basically. Mm -hmm. Luigi and Daisy arrive at the dig site having fun. She complains about the lack of security and Capelli's threats. Underground, she shows him the dinosaur bones and suggests that they're not like any that have ever been found, as they have a more human, human style to them. Okay, fair enough. All right, that's where we're heading anyway. Luigi tells her that she's beautiful and they lean in for a kiss. But as they do that, a pipe bursts and starts to flood the dig site. They see some men running away and realise that it was Scapelli's. Why are they wearing things that say Scapelli on them? That is not a good way to hide your identity, is it? Yeah. Of course, though, Luigi is a plumber, but he doesn't have his kit. They race back to Marion and they head back to the site, the dig site with Mario in tow to fix this thing. I did like the fact, not, sorry, taking a piss. I didn't like the fact that the water doesn't seem to get any deeper in the say, time they were gone. Surely, I mean, depending on how far it is, surely it would have been made a terrible mess. It would have been deep water. Except for this. And that was my initial thought. And then as you watch on, you realise, oh, there's a really easy explanation. It's mostly downhill. As we will see in the next set of scenes, they end up going deeper and deeper and deeper. And so technically the water would have been running away, right? Yeah, yeah. So I do accept that. Oh, okay. That seems like a problem. And then you're like, oh, no, it's not really. Mm. After the fact, you know? I don't accept it. <laughs> <laughs> we then see Iggy and Spike making their way through the underground area, talking about how they got it wrong again. They're back to get the right girl and hear the plumbers working. They then think they can smell Daisy. And I'm like, why didn't you do that before? Why is that? Why can you smell her now? Uh, what's that about? You know what you need to do? Go back to when they're sitting in the car going, oh man, there's too many, like, Brooklyn, it's too smelly, so we can't, sm like, make a point of saying that? Yeah. To the, how she's able to disguise her smell? Within the summer she's Yeah. 
Absolutely. They hit the plumbers over the head and grab Daisy. The lads wake up and follow her screams for help. They go deeper and deeper, eventually coming to a ledge with a deep drop and a wall opposite that ripples. I really like the sort of location and setup and no? It's just it's just, just so reminds me of, of like Space Jam, you know, when Michael Jordan goes through the little buddy one of Robin Simon and he appears on the other side. Well yeah, it's the same concept really, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> they didn't well, I mean, do another Bob Hoskins films and do frame Roger Rabbit through the tunnel. Oh yeah, 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 true. They then see Daisy's face in it and Luigi tries to grab her but ends up with the rock necklace only. Now this is a callback to an earlier scene. So her face in the sort of rock and the ripples and that kind of thing. When Luigi was watching his show, you know all those things, uh, what are they called? Where like, it's like a case and you put your hand and it makes the shape out of like, um, out of that stuff. Fuck, yeah, what's it um, called? He does that with his face. Where he puts his face into it and his face comes out of it. Yeah. I, oh, it's that. Mm. I can't remember what it's called. Those things. Luigi decides to jump through the rippling wall and Mario follows shortly. I do like kind of Mario's, I'm going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then sort of just commits himself. Yep. We then get Mario tumbling through some CGI dimension sort of crossing things. And uh, yeah, this isn't great CGI. No. It really isn't. <laughs> And he comes at the other side to where Luigi is. And they're in some sort of chamber, but don't have much time to take things in as they continue to follow Daisy. They come out of this area and emerge in some sort of dystopian city and lose Daisy in the crowds. And yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's like you have to stop, similar to them, stop and try and take in what you're seeing here. Yeah. Because it's like part Mad Max, part Blade Runner. Like, it's a, a, a shit dystopian looking city in context of what a lot of those cities look like. A futuristic city. That's it with like cars that run on this grid, so there's constantly sparks everywhere. Everyone's wearing rags. Yeah, I, I mean, I actually associate it with them um, like Judge Dredd. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Judge Dredd City. Yeah. Exactly that. That's exactly the, it. Because when Rico's getting a robot, that, that sort of that, that, that area there. That's it, it's mm. that, it's that. It's a dystopian city, exactly that. But yeah, they lose Daisy in the crowd, and everywhere you look, you see ads and signs for Cooper, mm -hmm. and lots of what appears to be fungus. I thought it was skin originally, mm. but it's actually fungus. Yeah, fungus yeah. From high above, Luigi sees Daisy, but before they can give chase, they are moved on by cops, because this place also has police officers. They fall from the balcony, and see some small dinosaurs eating some of the fungus. Very disoriented, the pair try to make sense of where they are, and they sort of stop to kind of talk things through. Did you see what was in the background? Because this is where you're like, what? What? Who's this film for? There's a movie theatre in the background. Oh, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I can think of that. It, it. it was an adult, adult film. And it was, I was a teenage mammal. X, 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 triple X. Oh, of course. Seriously. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> what? Do you know what that reminds me of? That's the modern day. Here's Shrek, a movie for kids. Here's an adult joke. For the parents to go, ah. oh, yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. the kids ain't going to get that. Yeah. We see the brothers are being watched by this film's version of a Goomba. We will get onto Goombas a little bit more when they kind of feature a little bit heavier. We then cut to Cooper Tower, where Cooper is complaining about life in the city. Apparently it's getting worse and he hates it. He is jealous of the human world and is a germaphobe. This is where this first comes in. And you're like, as we said at the start. What? What? I don't, I don't get that entire story at all. No, I don't. Particularly when we get to the mud bath scene, which puzzles me even more. His girlfriend, wife, friend, assistant? Mm -hmm. Who is she? Don't know. But her name is Lena, played by Fiona Shaw, who is brilliant in this. She just hams it up. She is one of those 
who knew exactly what she was doing. I was like, well, I ain't taking this too seriously. And she encourages Cooper to complete his plan. He needs to rock around Daisy's neck to apparently merge the world and calls Daisy princess. Okay, fine. All right, there's some links. We're getting there. There's a, there's a Mario link. We have a princess. Yeah. Yes. That's why I still think she's Peach. I, I, they, 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 they can't call her Peach because there'll be too much of a reference to the game. So I think they had to change the name. But I, I, I think, I, I, I think yeah. you can't call her Peach because Peach in a real world, the first thing is what? Mm. Your name's Peach. What? I'll just call her Princess. Princess, yeah, Princess will do. Iggy and Spike arrive and tell Cooper that they have her, but they don't have the rock and Cooper is very angry about that. It's not a normal rock, that's the thing. It's actually a piece of the meteorite that struck 65 million years ago before. Cooper, as we said, needs it to merge the worlds and Iggy and Spike tell him that the plumbers took it. Cooper then tells Lena to put out a plumber alert. So they have a plumber alert. Do you have a lot of plumber problems? Oh. Do you have a plumber alert? Like that, that's a specific button. Yeah, it's... It's, 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 it's funny, but it's like, seriously, is this, is this a film? Yeah, this is a film. Mm. It was made. <laughs> a lot of money went on it. Then I wanted men and Mario and Luigi as we see more of the city and we hear some of this film's PG insults. Egg suckers is used a lot. Get my way, egg suckers. Okay, all right. They meet an old lady. Oh, this part's funny. They meet an old lady who offers to help them before pulling a gun on them. <laughs> that made me laugh. You got any guns? And then she just pulls on, on them. <laughs> she tries to take the meteorite piece from around Luigi's neck, but a large woman from behind grabs her and throws her into the road. The old lady lands in the car, shoots the driver, and then causes a big fucking pileup. And honestly, I even wrote these words. This film is fucking weird. <laughs> like, this entire scene, you're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, well, I mean, what point has this got for this, for, for this, for this film? I mean, I mean, it's a weird film anyway, but what? This is, yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. It's, it, I could say it's to introduce Big Bertha, right? Mm. Who will have a bigger role. But it's the fact that they keep like the old lady goes into the car and then we stick with her st as she kills the driver and then we see all the, we we get a pile up and it's a pretty big effect yeah. as cars are crashed and stuff like that. Very strange. All right. Get him on, sucker! But as we said, the big woman is called Big Bertha and it's, she's played by Francesca P. Roberts. She steals the meteorite piece and runs off using boots that allow her to jump high and far. Now, I'm presuming here, these boots are referencing the boot in Mario, the one that he could climb into, yeah. right? That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, I figured as much too. Mario and Luigi then meet a street musician played by Mojo Nixon, who tries to cheer them up with his anti-Cooper song, which I like. I actually like the idea that this person exists in this world, you know, like a uh, liberal... Fighting against the yeah, man thing. You're not always going to have everyone support support for the president, are you? So, yeah. Oh. Ain't got no water anywhere. Food's bad. Slow the air. Got no resources. Got a great big stupor. All because of the evil king. What I don't like is this next part. As he is arrested... And the police call him Toad. And I went, wait, what? That's Toad. The little cap wearing yes. assistants. Toad, my, Toad has, has always been one of, one of my favourite characters throughout the entire games. And that's uh, not, not nice. Yeah, it's just, it's just weird. Yeah. And it's just like, it's shoehorned in. You're like, oh, you just wanted to, you just wanted to have a Mario character, another Mario character in there and yeah. call him Toad. You see, it, it, it just seems like, what, what, I mean, there's one of those films where they, oh, do you know what, this, what was that, um, there was another was it? Uh, Doom. Doom. So, so Doom. We just kept, oh, let's, let's throw this in. Yeah. Like, uh, they to help. they help it. Yeah. Let's throw hell in and go, oh, we're Doom. Yeah, yeah, That's we're okay. Doom now because we've got this in. Yeah. Someone said the word hell. We're yeah. Doom. That kind of thing. Here we are. Oh, this guy's called Toad. Mario. Mm -hmm. Even though it's got no relation to the actual thing Toad. You know? Uh, Mario tries to help Toad, but the police see that they're plumbers and arrest them too. Daisy elsewhere is brought to a room in Cooper Tower where she meets the missing Brooklyn girls. Which includes Daniela now as well. So we see that Daniela's there. We then see Mario and Luigi are brought into a police station. And I do like the chaotic nature of this police station. You know what it reminded me of? Robocop. The police station and Robocop. 
You know, when like all the people are fighting and it's constantly you know, yeah. on strike and stuff like that. It gave me that kind of imagery. Yeah, but there is know. some comedic moments in this part, I mm. think. They're taken to be the fungus, and it's basically the pair being sprayed and dunked with liquids. Ha ha. Maybe moment like Funhouse or yeah. something, you yeah. know? We also see that Toad is being processed. It's also during this period that we find out what Mario and Luigi's last name are, is, and you're like, oh, ha ha ha. It's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. I mean, I don't, I don't get that. What's the joke? For me, they, they, they don't need a last name. Just exactly, just say we don't have a last name. No, I mean, they're, they're always known as Mario and Luigi, not bloody Mario, or whatever. And, yeah. Just don't even have the cops say last yeah, name. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. Just say we like, what's your name, Mario, Luigi? Sweet, that's it. They're tied up, and it looks like they're about to be executed, but it's just mugshot pictures, which is again, ha ha ha, funny. Hey, yo, Mario, look at Goon Edge. What's that? What's that? What? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh, no. The pair on occasion now were told above them singing a song. He fills them on a history of this place. Basically what we already already know, what we've been told at the start. He does add that he thinks the fungus outside is the original king who has been de-evolved. So that's an important thing as well. And just to add more, you're like, more? Like, I've already, I'm already still trying to keep up with this movie. Mm -hmm. I know you're throwing in fungus, kings, de-evolution. Yeah, I mean, for, for potential kids, adult, whatever hell movie, there's way too much information. There is. It is it's not simple enough. <clears throat> Mario and Luigi are given a lawyer. It turns out to be Cooper. It's Cooper pretending to be a lawyer so he can find out where the meteorite piece is. After Mario insults Cooper, uh, Cooper tells him that, you know, you shouldn't mess with Cooper. He's evil and dangerous. He asks about the meteorite piece and they have no clue what he means. He then attacks Luigi and Mario tries to stop him. But is hit from behind by a cop who reveals the lawyer is actually President Cooper. So this got me stopping. So I was like, why did you even bother pretending? Why pretend to be a lawyer? I don't know. Why not just come in and be like, where's the rock? I'm going to kill you if you don't. I mean, and surely their time during town, they, they must have seen a picture of him or something, surely. Well, let's say it was quite frantic and frenzied. They never got a time to yeah, properly okay, take it yeah. in, right? But as well, like here we get the germaphobe thing, right? Where he doesn't want to shake Mario's hand. But then after he does and he wipes it down and stuff like that, again, it's that weirdness in here. But you know what really baffled me? President Cooper. We have elections? Mm. Now, I realise, you know, you could argue that we have elections in other countries that kind of aren't very democratic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so he could very easily be like, uh, well, I'm going to run elections to make it look like you can vote for others, but you can't really vote yeah, for yeah, others. Yeah. That kind of thing. Cooper tells the cop to take them to the DEVO chamber. Inside this room, we see Toad is strapped to a chair and he is hurling insults at Cooper. Cooper instructs Simon, played by Don Lake, to de-evolve Toad. And it turns Toad into a Goomba. And I actually don't mind the effect, the sort of face-stretching thing. I don't mind the effect, but when I saw this book, I just had an image of the actual Toad sitting in an electric chair. True. And Cooper standing there, or bow, or bows or whatever, and just like, Toad's... Shannon, a few seconds. Maybe not. Very good. Cooper then explains to Marion Luigi what de evolving is. It's self explanatory. We evolved, this machine takes you backwards. So, in theory, if you kept going, 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 you would get back to primordial slime. That might come up. He also reveals that he's evolved from the T Rex. Okay, fine. That makes sense again. I mean, it's in this story, I know it makes no sense. For the game-wise, yeah. Game yeah. and just in general. But for the story, it's like, well, yeah, T-Rex, you know, be the dominance thing, mm. stuff. So, you know, I'm fine with that. Toad is now subservient and very stupid. That's the thing. Goombas. So let's talk about Goombas. They're massive. They wear these big overcoats, but they've got tiny... Think uh, Beetlejuice <laughs> at the very end <laughs> of the weird. movie. Yep. Yeah, that's what it is with his head shrunk. That's what they look like. They're goofy. They're like... <sighs> Um, they're kind of cute, in yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah. I, I quite like them, I think they're funny. Yeah. Toad joins the other Goombas who give him a harmonica, like, around his neck so he can still play his music. That's actually really for us. <laughs> That's actually for us, because later on we'll be able to identify who is Toad, because they all look exactly the same. There's nothing to park them out. 
but you'll know the Goomba later on who helps is Toad because of the harmonica, mm -hmm. which is nice. Mario and Luigi fight back though and lock Koopa in the de-evolved chair. They turn the machine on and put him in it, but I thought this was weird. It doesn't seem to have any effect on him beyond briefly his eye switches to a lizard eye and comes back. And I was like, what? Why didn't it work? I don't get that at all either. I mean, unless they're trying to say that this is that this is his, his evolved form. This is what he is. This is what he came out as. But I isn't the idea to de-evolve him? Because at the end of the film, that's yeah. what we happens. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's. Put, I guess they didn't hit the switch properly or something. It's just weird. As they're escaping, Luigi notices the fungus has mushrooms and a bomb is being low, lowered. A specific bomb. It's a babomb. I can't. Whenever I hear babomb now, right? All I think of is Scott Pilgrim. Have you ever seen Scott Pilgrim yeah. versus the world? Yeah. We are sex babomb. One, two, three. Always. Oh, That's all I ever think now. Before they can do anything else, though, Goombas arrive, so they make their escape through the station. The Goombas try to shoot them, but they're obviously rubbish shots. It's yep. Star Wars stuff here. The plumbers then steal a police car, but Mario can't work out how to start it. Luigi figures out, though, thanks to sitting on his butt all day playing video games. Ba-boom! Hey, Go to this film, right? Fucking hell. We then get a, char a car chase sequence that is part bumper cars, part destruction derby. I think it's really good fun. It's actually probably one of the better scenes in the movie. Better though. action yeah, yeah, scenes, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, like it's quite destructive. Mm -hmm. There's some good driving effects. I like the fact that when they end up on top of the police car <laughs> going the opposite way, I think that was quite funny. You want to drive? <laughs> they do manage to evade the police and continue on, but end up driving into a tunnel that goes to a desert. I'll admit. That is one where I'm like, that's a good game reference. Mm -hmm. They plow through fungus, unable to see it, and go off a cliff. However, all the fungus acts like a, almost like a bungee rope, a safety rope. And they're able to land kind of safely on the desert floor. Convenient. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. fine convenience. Well, actually, you could argue as well, the fungus did it on purpose, based on what we would know at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Again, Spike arrived to find Cooper and Lena in a mud bath. They tell Cooper where the plumbers are and he tells them to go get them. What the fuck is this scene? Why does this exist? What is this scene? We didn't need to have this Iggy and Spike going in there, right? We didn't need this to have Cooper and Lena in a mud bath. Cooper up to his neck and saying, Oh, I love mud. It's so dirty and clean at the same time. I thought you were a germaphobe. I was just about to say the exact same thing. You know, I, 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 know, I know in like, mythology that mud helps you uh, eat clean, age, yeah. whatever, but it's still pretty dirty. A germaphon would, would have a little bit of trepidation yeah. about that. You, if it's about his lizard form, do you think when he de-evolved, it removed the germaphon part from him? Uh, I mean, uh, I doubt that that's smart to think that, but, hmm. you, but yeah, it's possible. Mm. Or tell us then. Do you know what I love about mud? It's clean and it's dirty at the same time. <laughs> So yeah, so basically, Cooper tells Lena to go and get the princess. She's not happy about this all, at this all. So it's the first sort of hint that Lena's a little bit jealous of his attention towards Daisy. She arrives in a room with all the girls and demands to know who Daisy is. And she quickly, quickly establishes who she is and calls her Princess Daisy before saying she has her mother's eyes. She tells Daisy to come with her and Daisy follows because what else are you going to do? We then see that Spike has been put in the de-evolved machine. So we've now jumped to this part. I thought they were going to get Mario and Luigi, apparently not. But it has been turned to evolve, not de evolve. Iggy gets the same treatment, and afterwards, they're both really smart. And all I was like, why didn't he do this before? Exactly. Why on earth would you not have done this before? Why would you not have made them even a bit smarter so they'd be better henchmen? Why have you not done this to your all your Goombas? Because it would ruin the plot of the film. <laughs> Thank you, yes. <laughs> He then tells them to go to the desert and find the plumbers. However, their expanded brain power has them dispute the logic. And that's the whole, see, they're still stupid. You know, because, yeah. yes, it may not be logical, but boss says, boss do. He threatens to kill them if they don't come back with a meteorite piece. And all I was like, no, you won't. You're one of those that says that shit and never mm -hmm. does it. You'd have done it already if that was the case. Yeah. yeah. Now Daisy is in a nice dress, she got changed, and Lena tells us some details about her mother, including the theft of the meteorite piece. Daisy asks about her father, and Lena says that he's sort of alive. Well, he's sort of alive. 
I like Lily Nemnis. I like her kind of evil thing. Mm. You know, she's got a bit of an uppity about her. Mario and Luigi are in the desert and lost. Get a little bit of toplessness from John Leguizamo. Looking good, looking good. Cooper is trying out a brand new de-evolution gun that they plan to use when they merge the world. So we're jumping from one scene to the other. Just getting these little bits of information and moving on, yep. you know? Lena then arrives to tell him that Daisy is ready and Cooper acknowledges that Lena is cranky. He says, and I got so angry with myself because I laughed. That she, he says that she got up on the wrong side of the, ne the nest this morning. And I went, pat, oh. And I was like, no, damn it. Damn it. That's such a bad joke. But yeah, I liked it. But it also suggests, check this, what Lena evolved from. Now, this is not said throughout the movie. But him saying that, and then I thought about how she looks. She's a bit thin, a bit scrawny, a bit bird-like, mm. wouldn't you say? Nest? The wrong side of the nest, yeah. Pterodactyl. I reckon she's an evolved from a pterodactyl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cooper goes to where Daisy is and witnesses her interacting with a chained up dinosaur. And he calls the dinosaur Yoshi. And I went, are you, what? What? Why is it not green? It's sort of green in a kind of baby shit green. Mm. Like, but why, is, why would you not just make it bright green? So it's obvious. Why would you not make it bright green? Well, technically in Mario 3, it comes in red and blue and all different ones on his side. Not a Super Mario, he's not in Super Mario Bros. Uh, 3. No, no, sorry, uh, Super Mario World. Does he? Isn't he just green in Mario yeah, World? Yeah, I feel like he, when he eat an apple, he changes colour, doesn't he? No, isn't that just superpowers? Oh. Later games, he, he changes maybe, colours. Oh, but oh, maybe I'm completely wrong, I don't know. Yeah, Yoshi is introduced in Super Mario World, mm. and the last game to come out before this movie was Super Mario World. Mm. So, yeah, that, that that's it. Just just keep it simple. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, Nintendo were involved in this. They could have told you the colour. What colour's the dinosaur? Baby shit green? No, green. <laughs> maybe copyrights. Maybe they would have that. that Nintendo said, oh, no. Nintendo were Sorry. actively involved in this movie. Maybe they realised, like, you know what, we, we messed up really. We, we gave you some money. You know, you know what, we, we don't want to be a part of it anymore. It's true that Nintendo were very, very unhappy about this to the point where they've been very, very coy and careful about giving away the rights to the movies in the future. Mm. So there is that. But they were involved in the movie. <laughs> they could have helped it. They could have helped it. Uh, Daisy demands to know where her father is and Cooper says he is all around us. Cooper then... Here we go. Adult stuff. Cooper then gets horny over her freshness and cleanliness. He tells her that she is different and does a weird thing with his tongue. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is this part of that film. Yay. He reveals to her that she's also descended from dinosaurs. Then he says probably the grossest line in a movie. You know what they say about little girls? They never forget the first time they're kissed by a lizard. And I was just like, oh. Oh, God. Oh. It's just... What the fuck is that? Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 again, I, I don't know why they even need to have this, this. I mean, why does every film, every single film, need, need to have a love scene or a, just any sort of romantic scene in it? Just make it about the fact that he wants to meet her at peace from her mm -hmm. and then wants to kill her so he can conserve his power. Yep. Because as a princess, if her father's dead, she'd be next in line for the throne. Don't make it that he wants to bang her or marry her. I mean, come on, guys. But that line... You know what they say about little uh, girls. That, you, there. Yeah, yeah. Can you not just say, do you know, even if he said, it wouldn't be any much better, but do you know what they say, you know what they say about women? Mm. But it's the little girls line, you know, what the fuck is wrong with your film, man? And you know what they say about little girls, don't you? <laughs> hmm? They say they never forget the first time they kissed by a lizard. <laughs> No, the first time they were kissed by a lizard. Dizzy, dizzy. Daisy backs away and is taken away by Goombas. Cooper then kicks Yoshi. Because Cooper's a villain. As if we didn't already know that. How to make you dad, how to make you aware. Yeah. Iggy and Spike have found Mario and Luigi from afar, but crashed their vehicle off a cliff. Uh, they end up in like quicksand, basically. And Mario and Luigi arrive and threaten to leave them to some hungry dinosaurs. It is here that we get the full explanation of what Cooper's plan is. And what fucked me off here already is, we've been told this. Three or four times already. The piece of meteorite that Daisy has was chipped off the full meteorite upon impact. We know. Once it is put back into it, the world would merge. We know already. The reason why, though, this part's explained. They weren't able to come through before was because the route was sealed. 
Uh, okay, apparently so. And it was only when Scapelli started construction that it was blasted back open. Okay, fine. That's I'll, I'm fine with that. Yeah. The foursome make a deal. Mario and Luigi will give them the meteorite piece in return for Daisy. The only problem is, of course, is the plumbers don't have it. We are now heading to what is the most wow sequence of just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, what is going on? But it does have some entertainment value. Big Bertha, it turns out, is the bouncer at a boom boom bar. Daisy interacts with Yoshi, feeling sorry for it. Then we're back with Mario and Luigi, attacking some bin men who are dumping rubbish in the desert and hijack the dump truck back to the sea. I, I don't know who these guys are, why they're here. Well, no, I do, aren't they? I think they're supposed to represent, like, Super Mario Brothers 2, the ones with the skull faces. Yeah, yeah. But that might just be me <laughs> jumping to, like, making a leap there. They're there to give them a car. They needed to get back to the yeah, fucking yeah, city. Yeah, exactly exactly yeah. that. Arriving at the bar, Mario and Luigi have changed in the suits to fit in. And you just, you know, when you're just like, at this point, you're generally could be like, you just don't get this, do you? You don't get what you're doing. Or you're actively, actively doing everything possible mm -hmm. to piss people off. They're in suits, right? So you're like, well, obviously, Mario's going to be in a red suit and Luigi's going to be in a green suit. No. Luigi's in a red suit. Mario is in a mustard yellow suit. What? Now, I will go right. But it's because they didn't want to put them in the coloured outfits until the end when they're in the coloured outfits. Yep. Fine. Why is Luigi in a red suit then? Why aren't they completely different colours? Why not a blue suit? I mean, when, when I saw Mario in the, the yellow suit. No, mu get it? No, it, I will not accept this. It is a mustard, mustard coloured suit. My first thought was, was Mario. That's what I thought. But no, it's too... Oh. Yeah, yeah, I, I, no, you know, I think there were I think there were Wario games then. Mm. I think there were a Game Boy. Maybe I'm too early, but you're not... I mean, yes, but then that's such a fucking leap even yeah, then. Because that that's a deep dive. I know, I know. There's the problem. Is these, What you're suggesting is a deep dive, and this film can't even do the fucking I, basics I know, right. I I just thought maybe Nintendo, because obviously they, they were involved a little bit, maybe they thought, you know what, let's try and sell our other, other games and suits and characters, you know, who knows. I doubt it. So, but. I just find it just, like, <clears throat> either, either give them the coloured suits, which wouldn't have been a problem for me, because it wouldn't have lessened the impact later on, because mm -hmm. later on they're in the more traditional looking outfits, yep. or just make them completely different. But by putting Luigi in a red suit, you draw my eyes to the natural red colour that Mario is supposed to wear. Yep. Absolutely absurd. But then the film also shows its age by having Luigi complain that his suit is a bit feminine. And I was like, what? A red suit is feminine? Really? A red suit? I've got red t-shirts. Are they feminine? Maybe just... Again, maybe it's him hinting like, oh, well, red's not really my colour. Yeah, but no, but it's the line. Yeah, 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 it may not be his colour, but like... And you hear Iggy. Iggy or Spike says, oh, yeah, it's my wife's suit or something like that. Which is, again, it's like, it's just so pointless. Yeah. Just don't have it. I mean, I, here's the thing. I'm not, this isn't a let's be woke offensive line. It's not that because it's very tame. It just shows its age. Yeah. Because it's generally one of the most um, stupid lines that's unnecessary and suggesting that a red suit is feminine. Mm -hmm. It's just weird, right? Because that's not. Yeah. Pink? Pink, yeah. Would have made more sense. Then you could at least be like, oh, I, that... In you know, even though pink a man can wear pink, obviously, but at least back then you could be like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it's bright red. It's like blood red. Mm. You know. Anyway, we're getting stuck in that. But these shit, these are the shit things that annoy me. Yeah. At the club, everyone is dancing some sort of weird dinosaur dance. The door woman has clocked that they're plumbers and is calling the police. Mario and Luigi see Big Bertha. And hey, kids, I hope you're up for the Mario seduces Big Bertha scene because this is all for you. Yes, Mario's plan is to seduce Big Bertha. And it goes badly at first as she punches him in the face. He decides he's not going to give up, though, and takes to the dance floor to ask her to hit him again. So basically what he does is, you're so strong and powerful, I'm well turned on by that. Can you do it again? Basically, yeah, this is a bit of um, sadomasochism. Yeah. Yeah. For Mario. She is impressed by him. And they have a slow dance together. Where he tries to get the meteorite piece. From around her neck throughout. And he will be at this point. As they're slow dancing. And Mario is trying to take it off her. Or probably the best scene. Motorboating her. 
because that's almost what it is to yeah, a degree. Yeah, yeah. It almost is to that degree. And you will, you have every, you will not be blamed to sit there and go, Super Mario Brothers, the movie, guys. <laughs> Super Mario the Brothers. Here is Mario dancing with Big Bertha with his face and her tits. I mean, old for this film, okay, the bone of said, I watched this with, with, with my child. And it was like, well, where's mushrooms? Where's flower power? Where's the leaf? Where's this? And it's like, it's not that sort of film. It's Sorry, just, kid, it's yeah. Basically, it, it's just called Super Mario Bros. That's it. That's, mm. that's, that's, that's your reference to the game there. <laughs> Mario does eventually get the meteorite piece and does a runner, but Big, Ber Big Bertha quickly realises what he did. Lena and Goombas then arrive and they plan to escape, playing catch with the meteorite, so they're throwing it about to each other to dodge the Goombas rather than just leaving. They screw it up though as it lands at the feet of Lena and the brothers are then forced to run it away. It's Bertha that saves them though, giving them rocket boots and then kissing Mario. Wow. Well, guess his dancing was that good. Yep. The plumbers smash their way out with the boots and land in the street. Luigi then notices another bomb in the fungus, but again, Mario pulls him away before he can do anything. Stuck between cops and goombas, the pair jump into the back of a dump truck that is apparently going to Cooper's Tower. How lucky was that? That convenient, that yeah. It was. Cooper is talking to the source of the fungus, the old king. It is dripping, so it looks gross. It's all slimy and dripping. And like, it's in this case and it comes out. It it's pretty gross looking, right? <laughs> Then outside Cooper's Tower, Mario and Luigi stop and realise how big it is. We then get a random scene of Cooper ordering a pizza. All this scene only exists for the jokes about the ingredients. Mm -hmm. the, you know, but you know what? You know when you just want to pick something apart? Because like, you know, fuck you, Phil. You think you're funny. Why? When Cooper begins this by going, I want to order the Cooper special. So that means he is, this pizza place does a special pizza specifically for him mm -hmm. yet following that so that's the pizza right it should be everything Cooper enjoys yep. Cooper, why are the next thing him telling him what ingredients to add and to take off then that's not so you you just want a normal pizza exactly then. what's the Cooper special you're the, you're the boss the president hold, I, I don't know. hold the mammal extra I mean it, it's all for that it's, <clears> it's and it's not funny no. I'm sorry it's not funny no. wait on pizza here may I help you King Cooper here. Oh, yes, sir. I'd like the Cooper special. Pterodactyl tail on that? Yes. Dino, lizard, hold the mammal, no worms, and uh, spicy. Mario and Luigi are in the bowels of the tower, and we get more jokes about plumbing and non-union jobs. I like that one. I like that one. I do like that one. Must have been a non-union <laughs> job. I'm like, ah, that's some good shit, man. Be in a union. Mario rela realizes it's the heating system, and they can turn it off to cause some problems for people upstairs. Hey, cool. I'm not, not against that. Yeah. They then find the locker and change in the outfits. And we finally, after 70 minutes or so, have them looking like they should from the game. It's 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 a very good accurate representation that yeah. looks quite natural. Plumbing outfits. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean they, they, they look dirty. You know, it's, it's not like pure pure rate. No. Which, 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 which is it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like outfits plumbing a plumber's outfits. Yeah, I like it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> In the elevator, though, they are joined by tons of Coopers, but are able to hide behind them. Meanwhile, Iggy and Spike have been captured by Len Lena, who tells Cooper that they were plotting against them, and he sends them to be killed. Lena tries to tell Cooper that she wants to be alongside him, but he refuses. So she chooses to not tell him that she has the meteorite piece and plans to do it alone. So yeah, she's got a bit power hungry as well. In the elevator, Luigi starts to get the Goombas swaying to the elevator music. Now, I think this is perfect for children. Yeah. This is a perfect scene that I smiled as well. Mm -hmm. Because of the slow swaying and all that. And then the part that gets me... Is that they're all into the music? They know they just start. They start teaming, dancing together, yep. and then eventually a door will open and another goomba will open it and just start shouting at them. Now that's some good shit for kids. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's our last time. <laughs> exactly. It is. It is. A Goomba Toad brings Daisy some food, but she tells them she's a vegetarian. Ha <laughs> ha! Get it? 
Uh, Lena then comes along and sends Goomba Toad away. Daisy asks for help, but Lena pulls a knife in her. She tries to kill Daisy, but Yoshi uses his tongue and bites her foot. Lena ends up stabbing Yoshi, gets free, chasing off the Daisy, who is now running through the building. Um, yes, yeah, so the elevated dance sequence then ends where the door opens and another Goomba just shouts at them for dancing. I say, <laughs> you laugh. Daisy runs into Toad Goomba, who has brought her a lovely plate of steamed vegetables that she had asked for. Thought that was nice. She runs away and into Iggy and Spike, and they ask her for help. The Goomba captors try to shoot her, but end up setting Toad Goomba on fire. Uh, Daisy refuses to leave him, though, and puts him out with an extinguisher. You know? So we're setting up all these extra characters who can help out. Yeah. And so we, we're, we're helped throughout all this by knowing it's Toad Goomba because of the harmonica. Mm -hmm. Iggy and Spike tell Daisy that they support her father and that they will help her. They suggest in this line that they have always supported her. No. And you're like, no, 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 no. no. You were going out of your way to kidnap her. Mm -hmm. You could have... If you were able to go to Earth, our realm, our parallel world, and you were, you could have told her. You didn't have to bring her back. Exactly. You're lying. Yes. I, I, didn't lie. I didn't really get that. They bring her to the slimy fungus and tell her that her father was, of course, de-evolved. And they leave her to talk with the fungus. Mario and Luigi are stopped on their journey up a shaft that is deep. Luigi thinks he can make the jump. So basically, they've, they've come to... It's, I think it's a lift shaft that goes from the top to the very bottom. The way, the way you word it there. It was a deep shaft. <laughs> well, it is it a deep shaft. Deep shaft. <laughs> it is a deep, sh <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lift shaft that is very, very deep. So Luigi thinks he can jump across it, and Mario's kind of like, "Don't do it, don't do it." But Luigi does it. He jumps into the air. Mario closes his eyes. When he opens them, Luigi is basically suspended in the air. Luigi, because he's an idiot, thinks he is flying, so encourages Mario to jump too. As Mario jumps, Luigi realizes that he's actually caught on a hook, because he wouldn't have felt that. You wouldn't have felt the thing hooked to his belt mm -hmm. at all. Nope. He's an idiot. Yeah. Of course, Mario jumps and falls to his death. And that is the end of Mario. No, oh, of course not. The fungus creates a trampoline and Luigi is able to grab him as he comes back up. Luigi then swings him to the other side. Daisy is talking to the gross fungus as Yoshi comes in. She sees that he is her and takes off the chain around his neck. In thanks, the dinosaur indicates a nearby computer and Daisy is able to use that computer to see the plumbers on CCTV and tell them where she is. All right. All right, I'm okay with it. Pretty, she, pretty crap system. I doubt she can break into it and just do whatever she wants to do. You know, I'll give it a pass because basically this room is like the throne room. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah. she's not really supposed to be in there. But we see that Cooper is also watching. In the vents, Luigi thinks the fungus is trying to communicate with him and takes a mushroom, like pulls a mushroom from it. To be fair, several times the bob and all that, you can see why he's getting to this because it keeps cropping up. The pair end up in a hallway and hear Daisy calling for them. Cooper is informed by the police that they are ready to de-evolve the mammals. And Cooper is confused. He's like, what? And basically... He finds out that it's Lena and that she he realizes she has the meteorite piece. Luigi, Daisy, and Mario are reunited and she introduces him to her father. And rightfully, Mario. Mario is like, the fuck? <laughs> Luigi is like, oh, nice to meet you, sir. <laughs> Which I liked. <laughs> Luigi tells Mario that is that the because he he puts the link together. This is the fungus that's been helping us. He puts it together. Uh, Mario is less than convinced. Uh, but they do find out the other missing girls are here, including Daniela. And I love Mario. Because it was, basically, Daisy goes, oh, um, what about Daniela? And Mario, not knowing that she's there, goes, oh, Daniela, she must like be wondering where I've gone. I was going to take her to WrestleMania. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> the fuck? Uh, but also, poor Daniela, she uh, missed out on going to WrestleMania. <laughs> But then obviously he finds out that she's actually here. So Mario goes off to rescue the girls. Cooper and his Goombas then run into Daisy and Luigi as they come out of that room. And elsewhere, because we're jumping from one scene to the other. Lena has arrived at the meteorite room, but troopers, troopers, Cooper's troopers. troops are waiting. Mario arrives at the missing girl's room, sneaks in above and manages to get the girl's attention. One of them, though, is an idiot. There's a lot of idiots in this film. Loudly declares, hey, Mario. She even sounds like that as well. I think that's a good, good, good example of it. Getting the Goomba's attention. 
but Mario manages to knock them out. He tells the girls to get the mattress and he opens up a massive, I mean a massive air vent. This thing is, the, yeah, it's the size of this entire frame, you know, absolutely huge. Cooper is finally given a meteorite piece and decides to start his invasion of our world. Mario and the girls are riding the mattress down an icy vent, followed by a load of Goombas. It is silly slapstick stuff as the Goombas get taken out by icicles and a wrench. This is probably one of the worst scenes for me. It's, a, it's too stupid. Yeah. You know? Again, it's, it's a, a level nine scenes where I was like, did you really need it? Yeah. Did 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 you did your boy enjoy it? Because I think it's kid friendly. He, he he thought it was funny. You know, he he he, he thought that for the um uh, basically a Mario Kart. Yeah, I suppose you could say it's Mario gun on a slide, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, they end up getting to the end of the vent and come flying out of the vent in horrible green screen. Horrible green screen. Uh, and they end up in the street, right at the feet of Cooper and his hostages. What a perfect fucking place to land. While Cooper talks, Luigi is able, because obviously Cooper's a villain, so he's got to exposi do exposition. Luigi is able to quietly um, power one of the boots they're wearing, which they use to kick Cooper in the chest and some of the Goombas off the ledge. Cooper ends up landing like a hanging metal container and starts to shoot at them. Mario uses the fungus to swing over. Trust the fungus, Mario. And climbs up and gets into it with Cooper. I like the long shots where mm. it's clearly not Bob Hoskins. Yeah. Like the, um, act, the stunt actor. Stunt, yeah, stunt actor, yeah. Lena is making her escape as the meteorite piece is knocked out of Cooper's hand. She reaches for it and falls onto an electric grid and is fried. And I went, oh, she's dead now? Yeah. Nope, apparently not. No, she gets up. Her hair is all crazy now. And she has the meteorite piece. Mario pretends that he has it, undoing his shoelaces, uh, distracting Cooper as Luigi and Daisy see Lena and give chase after her. I thought it was clever by Mario. So he puts the meter piece in his hand, like pretend it's hand, with the, the rope necklace there, so it looks like he's holding it. it. It's clever. Yeah, definitely. Mario ends up running from Cooper. Lena is putting the meteorite piece back in. And I do like the fact that it looks like it's supposed to be really dangerous. Hence why Daisy is the one that has to do it. Mm -hmm. Because electricity kind of erupts around here. It's CGI, computer graphics, doesn't look great. But it doesn't look terrible either. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's sort of in the middle. Mario and Cooper are facing off and Mario picks up a bomb. And I love everyone's reaction to this. He winds it up and he winds it up and sends it towards Cooper but ends up falling off an edge. Because it's got like slow walking feet. Yeah. But you instantly get the threat of this. Because Cooper's like... Of a bomb, like, and everyone's a bit like shit. Presumably, the explosiveness of it is quite powerful. Mm -hmm. We see it falling through the fungus and landing below, but we see it continuing the walk. So we'll come back to that bomb in a bit. Luigi gets the girls through the doorway, and as Lena finishes the job, the force kills her, blasting into the wall as a skeleton. And it's like, oh, that's a bit unexpected. Yes. Like, kills her outright, you know? Uh. Yeah. Daisy tries to take it out, but it's jammed in. Luigi might have the tools needed, though, being a plumber. Carrier, uh, Cooper and Mario start to disappear as they begin to merge with our world. Again, it's not terrible looking. Hmm. You know, the merging, disappearing and thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. More complex, though. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll give you it. At the dig site, Cooper and Mario appear as well as... I mean as well as transforming the t t Twin Towers into Cooper Towers. Now, obviously, this is kind of famous as something that just like, oh, it's just unfortunate because it, of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So the Twin Towers are in the background. And when Cooper Towers merge, the problem is, is that, or not a problem because it is what it is, Cooper Towers replacing the Twin Towers and the damage that exists in Cooper Towers really looks fucking like, you are like, you are a bit like, wow. Yeah. How unfortunate is that? You know, it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, Twin Towers pop up in a lot of movies. You can't do it much about that. No, of course not. And why should you? You know, you shouldn't ignore the existence and stuff like that. But in this regard, it is a bit like, oh, wow, yeah. that's eerie. Eerie is the word, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so on the dig site, and we are going to get to what I think is uh, probably the worst sequence in the movie of just like, yeah. God, that's stupid. 
Cooper grabs the D over the Evo gun and uses it on Scapelli because oh, lots of people are there as well. And he de evolves Scapelli into a monkey. And uh, everybody laughs. We're having a finding this terrifying. Evan just goes, ah, ha, ha. Yes. And it's like, what, what, what? Why is this funny? Like, why is it funny that he did it to Scapelli? I know, exactly. Yeah. <coughs> You're next, basically. Basically. <clears throat> But as Cooper shoots Mario, he uses the mushroom from the fungus to shield him as it grows big and then knocks the gun out of his hand. At this exact moment, Luigi and Daisy get the meteorite out, which sends everyone back to where they're supposed to be. We see the bomb is continuing its journey. And I, I even I, I, I have a joke for you. Why did the bomb cross the road? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's crossing a road causing yeah, yeah, cars yeah. to crash. Toad Goomba arrives and gives Luigi a gun, and they arrive to see Mario in trouble. Cooper orders the Goombas to shoot Mario, but Toad distracts them with music. Starts playing songs, so they start dancing. Cooper goes nuts, punches them, <laughs> and starts shooting, shooting wildly at Luigi as he moves through the air on his boots. I hated this. How? Doesn't it look like he's barely paying attention, Luigi? Yeah. He's just like that. Like he's just looking around like that. Completely what? just distracted, yeah. Well, and I didn't get it. I was like, did you tell him what was supposed to be happening? Mm -hmm. Like, all right, John, uh, he's going to be shooting at you, so basically look like you're a bit scared, try and dodge a bit. Mm -hmm. And he went... <laughs> <laughs> he lands next to Mario, and together they shoot D-Evo guns at Cooper. As he begins to de-evolve, the bomb arrives under him and finally blows up, knocking him in into, into the air and into the metal container. I was actually really disappointed by the explosion that comes out of a bomb. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, oh, it's a bomb, but you were all acting like it was a yeah. nuclear bomb. Yeah, it's going to be massive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is he dead, though? Of course not. Is he emerges as a massive beast? How crap did this look like? Also, that is not looks nothing like a T-Rex. No. You said he, he, if he de-evolved, it'd be a T-Rex. Mm -hmm. It does not look like that. But the plumbers continue to use the guns until he de-evolves into primordial sludge and splatters on the floor. Thought that was a good ending. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Everyone begins to cheer and the plumbers take a flying lap of honour. It's weird. They're just on each other's boots going... So, so reminds me of the end of Greece. Okay, all right. <laughs> do, 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 do. Anyway, with Cooper gone, apparently that's enough to turn the king back. So he just turns back into human. Naturally, we evolved. Yeah, because I would think you'd just maybe put them in the machine. Mm. And in probably the most confusing, pointless, <clears throat> underused cameo you're ever going to see in your life. Do you know who plays the king? No, no. The King is played by Lance Henriksen. Really? Lance Henriksen of Aliens fame, plays Bishop and all that. That is Lance Henriksen. Really? That yeah. is. 1993, so that would that, have, have been after Aliens. Absolutely. Wow, he was a big name. Wow. But it is Lance Henriksen who is in the movie for five seconds and has one line, which is where he just coughs some fungus and goes, love those plumbers. That's it. That explains the budget, man. So it's, it's got man. Seriously. Pointless. Could have been anyone. Three, Pointless. Three big actors getting paid a lot of money. Yeah, it's got Sometime later, Mario and Luigi are leaving. Daisy opens the doorway with the meteorite, but refuses to go with them. She belongs here. Can make things better. It makes sense. Completely makes sense. Luigi tries to talk her into coming with them, but accepts and they kiss. Uh, Luigi and Mario leave. And it's not like super emotional, but I think it's touching. I think it's touching, right? Yeah, yeah. I bought into Luigi's uh, and Daisy's chemistry. Yeah. And Mario's line of, look, what she's trying to tell you is her, she needs to find her place. And I was like, yeah, that's a good line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We then cut to three weeks later. Mario and Daniela are making dinner as Luigi mopes around. He perks up, though, when he sees them appear on his favourite show. And in there, the host refers to them as the Super Mario Brothers. And I was like, oh, you film... <laughs> And here's the thing. It's all, these last two scenes are everything wrong with the film. One, random jamming in of a game reference. That really doesn't make any sense. And this next scene. Wait, what? What the fuck is this? As a knock on the door disturbs them. 
and Daisy arrives all geared up like she's a fucking warrior. I mean, camo, big guns, like it's like a fucking joke Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Yep. Hot shots, fucking top of Harley at the end of Hot Shots Part Two. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. She asks them to come back with her and says they won't believe this. And Mario's like, oh, yeah, oh, I will. And Luigi's like, you believe now? He's like, well, yeah, after what we've seen. And that's the end of the film. Luigi, Mario! Daisy! You gotta come with me, I need your help. What, what, what's wrong? You're never gonna believe this. I believe it. You do? <laughs> I believe. And we would never ever find out what we wouldn't believe. What do you reckon? Let's take a guess. What what was it? What was it? I'm gonna say either Cooper returned. Nope. Or Bowser. I think Bowser. Mm. I think it was another one. Mm. Uh, because of the primordial slime thing, I couldn't really see it. But I figured, okay, they were planning something. Like maybe they didn't have the plan, but that would have been the na next stage, yeah. so to speak. I would out or the king turned out to be evil. I don't know, something like that. Mm. But we never find out. We would never get a sequel. We never will get a sequel. Nope. Uh, we just have this completely batshit, stupid ending where you're like, what the fuck? I think it's quite fitting, actually, though, because uh, imagine if they made another one. Okay, so it would have been possibly made like 95, maybe 96, mm. yeah. And then, so then you would have had to try to explain the story of the fact that it's normally Mario trying to rescue the princess. But obviously, in this one, it was more like Luigi and the princess, really. So trying to explain that for over the game, it would have been. Very difficult to explain that. So, what? it's her rhyme with guns as well, though. Yeah, like, and I mean, bullet. She's got like a bullet belt on her, and you're like, "What the fuck is this? Like, when did this go all last fucking commando?" Hey, what's your mind? I mean, I, I, I know you're saying like a predator or not, but she reminded me. Uh, you, you ever seen them with the wolf where Kachansky is being attacked by the by the, the sirens, and then she appears with all her all her camera on. Because like, come rescue me, Dave. I'm, I'm, I'm here. Uh, yeah, that's what I was reminded of. Okay, deep cut red dwarf reference there from Damon. Look, it's the Super Mario Brothers. I think you can enjoy this movie. Provided you completely... You have to first massively lower expectations for just a quality movie overall. You've also got to be willing to go, look, I'm not going to see this as a video game movie adaption. I'm going to see it as a movie with some video game references mm -hmm. at best. Even with all of that, though, it is way too long with way too many stupid, pointless moments. I think you could have, if you removed all of that, you could have dropped 10, 15 minutes immediately. Easily. Easily. And here's the thing. These are plot moments. We're talking about the stupid, stupid moments. Like um, Cooper fucking in the mud bath. There's a good example of why is that there. Remove Yoshi from it completely. Remove Yoshi completely. Exactly. There you go. There's another load of scenes done. Remove the part where he's sexually advancing. <laughs> Cooper's sexually advancing on Daisy. Gone. All of that. Remove the Scapelli stuff. Gone. There's your time savers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like I said, like I said did, 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 this, this film could have been 50 minutes long. I, I, I think a tight 80 minutes would have mm. been all right. A tight 80 minutes. But I really do want to focus on the positive stuff as well. Because I can tell you till I'm blue in the face, it is a crap movie. You know it's a crap <clears> movie. <throat> yep. If you're watching this and you've got this far, you have seen this movie before. You're aware of that. What I want to sort of say is, listen, there is some... Solid acting. I think Bob Hoskins does really well considering he doesn't like the movie. He does really well and puts his heart into it. I already said at the start, love John Leguizami in it. Like Samantha Mathis. Like Fiona Shaw. Mm -hmm. I like... His thing, I like... Oh, fuck, what's his name? I've forgotten Cooper's name. Dennis Hopper. Um, I like Dennis Hopper in this. I just think he could have been so much better. Yeah. I think he should have been over the top. They made him too serious. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? I like the, the actors that play Iggy and Spike. I like a lot of the cast. Mm. The problem is, is the characters of these are often stupid. The world is stupid. Yep. The world is crap to look at. I appreciate that Like, there's a lot of set building. Mm -hmm. A lot of fucking effects and stunts went into doing this. Yeah, definitely. So I appreciate all of that. But when you're, like, you're putting this much effort in this thing, but this is the story you've come up with. And you're like, why? Mm. Why is this the story you wanted to do? Now, I've read since that apparently the writers and directors wanted to have a Wizard of Oz feel. Where it's like you've been transported to a completely different reality. Completely different mm. reality. And I get that. Here's the problem. There's nothing different about this reality. It's dystopian cities. Yeah. We've seen this shit. By 1993, we'd seen this shit loads. 
We had seen this a lot. Where is the difference? What are you doing? When we're inside Cooper Towers, yeah. tell me what's different about that. That could be any office block ever. Exactly, yeah. What is different? So that doesn't even make sense. You're not creating Oz here where it's visually hmm. beautiful. The city is grey, it's dark, it's crap. You've got fungus everywhere. Where's the imagination? Exactly. exactly. Where is the colour? Why not make it bright and beautiful and create this? You can have weird imagery, hmm. but make it bright and weird. No one says you have to copy a Mushroom Kingdom. You don't. Even though Cooper Shutt does make a reference to that as well. Yeah. But you could put some colour and life into it. Or think about it as well, a lot of the times in the city, what do we see all the time? Metal gratings. Yep. Metal grates. We go to a club. It just looks like a club. Like, where is your imagination? But I'm afraid of how, oh, oh, I think it's like they, 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 they clearly over, overestimated on the, on, the, on the money and they clearly didn't have enough. Do you think? I think they spent too much. Do you think? Uh, I, mean, I mean, well, or maybe, or, or maybe with the budget they didn't spend it on the right, the right thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, you've got to think, well, okay, you spent loads on creating these cars that will be able to be drivable mm. and these sparks and these constant effects, and you spent money in these massive set pieces involving the car chases. That's where this money's going? I mean, perhaps, perhaps maybe they, they should have maybe, maybe got rid of the three top actors and gone with unknowns. Unknowns? And Very, a, lot, a lot cheaper. You might have saved money there as well. You're actually right. But if I said to you, like, if you'd never seen Super Mario Brothers in the movie, and I said to you, well, it's got a five-minute explosive car chase scene. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's like, what you'd be like, wait, what, Mario Brothers? And you're like, and you're like, you, 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 you'd be, oh, but it's, it's all, um, it's no colour. Like, there's no prettiness. There's no bright things. There's no imagination in that. But yeah, you've got a five-minute crazy car chase scene. Mario and Luigi walk around the desert for a bit. There's fungus. Mm. A lot of fungus. Big Bertha is a big woman in a red dress. Mm. Yoshi's a small dinosaur. You'd be like, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't look like Yoshi. Not in the slightest. Yeah. Not in the slightest. Don't don't get yourself excited at all about that. Well, what about Cooper? He's president? Okay, all right. Well, that kind of still like king, right? He's a germaphobe. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me, there's like these constant extra things yeah, exactly, yeah. that just make you go, what? But does that weirdness and wackiness make it a bit more endearing? Memorable. Because we yeah. could say, for one thing, we can agree on it is not bland no, as no, no, an no. overall movie. No. You know, we've done bland movies. Yeah, I, I mean, the one thing I'll say is, is that, that, that I watched last week, and it's the, the first time I've seen it in about 10 years, mm. and I, I remembered everything from it. It, it, stuck, it stuck in there because, because not because it's a good movie, because the fact that it, it obviously and I caught my attention somewhere. So. It, it will. It so will. I'll, I'll, I'll give. I'll, I'll give it. I, I mean, I'll give it a benefit for that because the fact that it, it's in there, it's in, it's in my head. So, I do think it is something that sticks with you, even if it's purely because you're sitting there scratching your head, going, mm. "What the fuck is this?" But I like that aspect of it. Yeah, of course. But that is not me saying it's a good movie. We will come back to this and wrap this up with this very important point. This is not a good film. It is way too much wrong with it mm -hmm. to be an enjoyable movie. A kid will be bored watching it. An adult, who's an, an adult who doesn't know about Mario or care about Mario, is just going to think it's too fucking stupid yeah, at times. Definitely. And the gamers, well, we are them, and we're saying, "What the fuck was this?" Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Love to know what you think. Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there, that's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl, as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, and of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?